Common Sense, a production of Citizens for Limited Government. My name is Sue Ann Penna, and I'm joined by my co-host, Eddie Malavarca, and we are honored to have with us today James O'Keefe of Project Veritas. James has been an undercover citizen journalist and has helped to expose the fraud that the mainstream media just refuses to cover. So we're so happy to have you here with us today, James. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. So James, let's talk about one of your first big breakthroughs, which was with um, Acorn. So if you can go through how you got involved and, uh, and really what became, what was the end result of your investigation? Well, we, uh, I had received a Facebook message from a, from a young woman who had do, wrote an article about a Planned Parenthood thing we had, we had done, I had done a, a year or two earlier, and she said, why don't you go investigate ACORN? I was watching YouTube and seeing how they were uh, breaking and entering into people's homes and committing all types of you know, various crimes, so I thought, well, this is interesting. Why isn't the media covering this group, particularly because uh, President Obama was once an attorney for ACORN. Exactly. So the president was had a, had a stake in this group, and it seemed like you know they're getting millions of dollars of taxpayer money. They were allotted five billion in, in the uh, wow. in the uh, one of the stimulus packages three years ago. So we we just took it upon ourselves to hop in a car and drive around the East Coast and visit all these offices. And I got my grandmother's pimp or not, not pimp costume, chinchilla coat. Your and grandmother's pimp costume. My grandmother's pimp costume. What would become the pimp costume? What would become? And then that would begin, you know, the, the uh, uh, infamous uh, the props that we use in costumes and creative sort of angles to expose fraud. Right, and it's interesting that you walk in that way and you were taken seriously and someone sat down and, and had a conversation with you. I mean, we should say ACORN is a, a community organizing group, as you had said, that does receive lots of federal funded money. So I guess it's in their interest. So what, how did you go in and what was your, what was your little, um, your catch to get them to talk well, to you and what were you looking to do? Saul Linsky wrote that, you know, you, you operate within your own self-interest. That's what community organizers try to do. That's mm -hmm. what they did to the Catholic Church, for example. He would approach the priests and, and try to sort of exploit them by focusing on what their self-interest would be. So we we saw the organization, or I saw the organization was uh, interested in sort of recruiting people and and sometimes the bottom dwellers of society and, 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 and organizing them. So we went in posing as a criminal. Right. And in a lot of these investigations, we sort of make our subjects, uh, we highlight the hypocrisy by, by holding them accountable to what their own standards are. Mm -hmm. So we saw them breaking and entering people's homes, and I said, well, why don't we just start a brothel and, and say we want to use the, the dividends from that to fund my fictitious political campaign. And they fell for it hook, line, and sinker. They, they fell for it so hard that I was running out of ridiculous things to say. But luckily, <laughs> a friend of mine said, well, just say that instead of having one prostitute, say you have like a dozen from like El uh -huh. Salvador. He said it almost as an aside. Right, but like off the cuff. I'm in the moment, and I'm thinking, what do I say, what do I say? So I just, well, we, we whore out uh, a dozen underage prostitutes, and they actually took out a tax form and said, make sure you indicate it as performing arts on the, on the tax form. Ah, that'll get you every time, performing arts. Wow, get, that's just basically. amazing. So then what was, once you had this footage, then what was the plan? That, well, that's the interesting part. First, we went to, um, we, we tried to take it to our elected representatives in, in D.C. That didn't work out so well. They, it, it's so outside of people's experience. You even talk right. about it. Now people know what it is and they've uh -huh. seen it. But you talk about it, they're like, I don't, I don't believe that. Or they said, you, you must be some type of con artist trying to approach me with this absurd premise. Or worse, they think that you yourself have committed a crime right. because you're talking about prostitutes. Mm -hmm. So they, the, 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 a lot of people in Congress didn't understand it. And everyone was telling me, go talk to Andrew Breitbart. Yes. It seems like all paths lead to, to Andrew Breitbart. So we, <laughs> we, 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 I flew out to California. I had a friend out there, and I, I showed him the first tape. And mm -hmm. I said, there, there are potentially more. And he instantly, immediately went into strategy mode Right. And said, "With this, you're going to embarrass. Um, you're going to embarrass the New York Times." At the time, I didn't. I, I didn't really. Well, how, how would you do that? Well, at the time, I didn't really understand what he meant. I, 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 I had some experience investigating Planned Parenthood. I knew the media was corrupt. Right. I had some experience. Mm -hmm. My intuition. I knew the media was bad. I didn't even realize how bad they were. And what he meant was that when we released that first um, tape. The, the media, the mainstream media, would go on to say that it was an isolated incident. Right. 
without any evidence. They mm -hmm. would just bet. That's how they would cover it up. They would cover it up because in, in, the, in their world's experience, they would never imagine their wildest dreams that we would have some strategy to release them one at a time. That's precisely right. what our strategy was. Right. So we released the first tape, and then we waited a day, we released the second tape. And then the New York, the New York Times, the ombudsman, admitted that he actually um, selectively edited out Bertha Lewis, the CEO of, of Acorn, mm -hmm. her statement that we got thrown out. The New York Times edited that out of their articles to protect Acorn, and then would later have to apologize for it. Wow. So the whole, the whole operation was not just an investigation into government you know, the sleazy actions with organizations with government ties. It was an operation that, in a greater way, exposed the media. And that, and for that, that's why they hate me so much. Mm -hmm. Not because I do citizen journalism, but because every time we do citizen journalism, we effectively expose their not doing the job. Right, their ineffectiveness. Because we agree, cor corruption is always going to exist on some level. But the fact that they let it slide and the fact that they'll find excuses for it and the fact that they'll come after you for exposing the truth. I mean, have you been the target of lawsuits and, uh, and whatnot in, in, just in trying to expose the truth? It's been uh, absolutely uh, uh, incessant attacks from in almost every direction and uh, legal, uh, civil, uh, criminal, uh, uh, pretty much. I could probably pass the bar exam at this point because I, I spend more time on the phone with trying to determine what the laws are and and e even when you don't e even when you don't even come close to breaking the law they'll accuse you I've had I've had my videotapes destroyed by authorities for example and then they charge me with a crime I didn't commit so it's an incredibly difficult thing to do because you're you're taking on the media you're investigating the government. It's, it's a lot and of... Uh, you're rocking the boat. People like the status quo. But what do you, what do you think stops people from even want, not wanting to know that truth? I mean, is it like an inconvenient truth? Do we all have to face up to something then on a certain level that people just want to push an agenda? Yeah, there was an interesting story recently in the American Spectator uh, just last week because President Clinton was speaking at the uh, convention mm -hmm. in, in, in Charlotte, and... They're talking about Juanita Broderick, the young woman who accused the president of rape. Mm -hmm. And Lisa Myers from NBC actually said to Juanita Broderick, who probably was raped by the, by the former president, said, it's not that your story is not credible. Mm -hmm. It's that your story is too credible. Right. And there is a very close relationship with journalists and, uh, and government people. It's very cozy. They get their information from each other. They, they feed each other information. There is a very tangled web of alliances in media and government. Frankly, half the people at ABC News are married to people in the White House. I think there's actually two individuals, one at Good Morning America, who is actually married to someone working in the White House. Would you want to investigate no. the organization your husband is married to? I certainly wouldn't want to. No, you're not going to investigate your paycheck. I'm not going to investigate <laughs> my paycheck. And that's a metaphor for the way the relations are set up. So the only people who can effectively expose things, I'm not talking about you know, little things, I'm talking about major stories, are people who don't have a, a skin in the game. Mm -hmm. Like Matt Drudge, he broke the Monica Lewinsky story from his apartment in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. What does that say about the Washington press corps? Right. When We're a guy 3,000 miles away, right. who's not even in DC, breaks a story that eventually impeaches the president. Right, so that really is the overall thing, is just the mainstream, a total lack of, of respect for the truth and going after the truth. And what is the quote by Mark Twain, that if, if you don't read the paper, you're uninformed, and if you read the paper, you're misinformed. That's right. <laughs> so that is obviously what, what is happening here. And at, at least now there is a hunger to find the truth, and I think people more and more are starting to look for that. Because, you know, we have NPR, that was another one of, of mm -hmm. uh, your investigations, and here they are funded. You know, what, isn't that the biggest danger to the state, as Thomas Jefferson said, is a state-run newspaper or any state-run news organizations. So tell us what you were finding there at NPR. Yeah, we, that was uh, after this ACORN investigation. I, I, I got my sort of palate wet with the, the notion that the media was insanely corrupt. And, and as time went on, I would, I would become more of a target of, of false accusations and false crimes and journalists libeling and slandering me. I probably got 
over the last few years, approaching 300 different corrections and retractions from journals. It's unbelievable how many corrections we get printed. Wow. You know, before you yeah. go on to that, what, what, tell us what the outcome, though, was of the ACORN investigation. Yeah, the uh, outcome... that's important to say. You, you went through all of this now. ACORN was defunded, and um, the President Obama actually signed the bill to defund ACORN. And uh, I think it was 83 senators voted to defund the organization. They immediately... First, they tried to say there was a few bad apples, but because it was city to city to city to city right. to city, and the way you released the videos, it was universally condemned and um, and led to a discussion about you know the, the nature of citizen journalism. This was around the time when the Tea Party was just mm -hmm. getting started right. about, about three years ago, the nine twelve mm -hmm. and everything, and it sort of led to the, the sort of Tea Party citizen involvement and. I think most importantly, as a result of that investigation, people come up to me and say, you know, I, you, that whole thing inspired me to take action because locally. this is what we are supposed to do as citizens of the United States. It is yes. our government. It's our responsibility. And, you know, for a long time we had been asleep at the wheel. Our lives were going by just fine. We were making money. Um, we were able to take care of our families. And I think, you know, as, as the brakes were coming, you know, being slammed on that way of life, we realized, my gosh, there's so much stuff going on behind the scenes that we don't know about. That's right. And people are now starting to take more responsibility, whether it's through the Tea Party or the amazing actions of what you do, which, you know, you and everyone in your organization, I, I can't commend you enough. It's, I, it's, it's completely brave what you do. To yeah, there's been an awakening on many levels, especially going back a couple of years when, you know, things you started to do uh, came, came, came forward in the Tea Party movement. It was a Prior to that, I guess we were we, we had a false sense of security sure that the media we always knew the media was biased, but we never believed that it would, could be that biased. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess we never really connected it um, so much that way. But when you actually saw what happened after the election, or even how Obama got elected, and the how the media never covered, didn't bother to vet him, or even if he was vetted, they ignored it. Right, they ignored what was vetted. And so right, they ignored what was vetted. So then you come along. And you actually start showing this stuff, and it's rejected, not only by people in government, obviously, mm -hmm. but the media itself. Right. So what, have, what kind of response have you got? I don't want to take you too far off the track, but what kind of response did you get from the media even now regarding it? Are you still being somewhat attacked? Oh, I think they hate me more than you could possibly imagine. They're doing their job. They, 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 you make them look bad. You... you, you uh, First of all, they believe that you should have some type of pedigree or some, some journalism school. Mm -hmm. And we actually did an, an investigation called to catch a journalist. We actually went into the journalism schools to videotape their shenanigans, <laughs> which I, it's funny because one, one, one Huffington Post reporter, Huffington Post, which is a supposed citizen journalism operation, which in fact it's a statist operation is what it is, but one of the, reporter, one of the reporters, Sam Stein, who's a White House correspondent, we, I, I was in this journalism school because, you know, all these things, and I, what do I do about it? Well, I'm going to go to the journalism schools. And I'm in the Columbia Journalism School, and I have my little videographer undercover there, and, and he's t talking about uh, just journalism. And he, all of a sudden, he brings up Sam Stein from the Huffington Post. He said he, he boozes his subjects up, like he gets them intoxicated and everything. So I was like, that's interesting. I was doing another investigation of a union thing, and they were talking, and Sam Stein writes an article about me and says that I'm a failure and everything. So I put the two together.